He's a Zimbabwean journalist who is currently working as a senior online reporter for Alpha Media Holdings, otherwise known as AMH, the largest privately owned media house in Zimbabwe. His duties include writing stories for online, optimizing the web, and multimedia content for websites, mainly Newsday, Southern Eye, The Independent, and The Standard. Tapiwa Zivira commands seven years of experience in the field of journalism, and in the past he has been involved with Zimbabwe-Europe Partnership for Democracy, otherwise known as ZPAD, as a media and advocacy officer. He also holds an award for the Humanitarian Reporting Award online with UNFPA. So last month, about 900 villages were evicted, allegedly by police from a Mazoe village. The villagers alleged this was so that the first family would set up a game park within the village area. The claims, however, have not been verified, but some of the villagers have been dumped in Rushinga, over 200 kilometers away. Others resisted being moved, citing the fact that they needed to harvest their crops. Some have been marooned at the nearby Lazy Seven Farm. So we are joined by Tapiwa, who's joining us by a phone in Zimbabwe. Tapiwa, how are you and welcome to Sahara TV. I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so you are obviously the reporter on the ground who actually visited these sites and spoke to the affected families. Can you tell us exactly what is going on there? Yes, uh, what happened is that um, these families uh, were just um, given an eviction order mm. uh, by the police. Uh, they came and they ordered them to move out. Right. So we moved, we moved in and we talked in to the villagers. Uh, they said that uh, this was because um, the first family wanted to set up a game park uh, at their place. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. And... Um, uh, but now the biggest problem is that most of them had no alternative place to go, right. and also they were ab about to harvest their crops. Um, so it was very difficult for them to move, but uh, they, they were then forcibly moved out, with some of them dumped about 200 kilometers away, and some were just uh, dumped uh, at a farm that is just nearby the the village that they were living. So this was without warning of any sort, because I would imagine that, you know, for 900 families to be just removed, was there no proper warning given ahead of time? Yeah, the villagers uh, claimed that there was no um, full warning for them to move. Mm -hmm. uh, they were just um, told to move right away. Okay. Now, who owns this Manzo farm in Mazoe, where they used to live? Um, according to uh, the data that was gathered, mm -hmm. uh, this farm uh, was reallocated to these villagers during the uh, initial stages of the country's uh, land reform program. Right. So these were actually new farmers. Mm -hmm. And these are subsistence Ooh. farmers who rely on what they grow. They grow tobacco and maize. Uh, that's their main crop. Some of them grow sunflowers. And this is their livelihood, right? This is the source of their livelihood. And uh, for the tobacco farmers, it was much worse because this is the time when they were supposed to be harvesting and selling their tobacco season, which is a once-off uh, thing uh, yeah. that they do annually. And what happened to their crops? Were they graded with... Are they still in the fields? What's happened? Um, some of them managed to just salvage mm -hmm. um, the little crops that they could. And um, they then, when they were moved away, they carried uh, some of it with them. But as you know, they lost much more than they could salvage. Okay. Now, I know that they've taken this case to court and try, they're really trying to hold the uh, evictions. Uh, their lawyer, actually, his name is Tonderai Batasara. You know, he says here, we know some of the properties have been demolished, but that has to stop. The villagers are not resisting eviction, but they are waiting for offer letters to places that are properly demarcated. According to Section 74 of the Constitution, no persons may be evicted from their home 
or have their home demolished without an order of the court made after considering all relevant circumstances. Did you manage to speak to this uh, lawyer? Yes, uh, when we spoke to the lawyer um, uh, last week mm -hmm. uh, uh, or a week more ago, um, they told us that they had filed an application uh, mm -hmm. to um, actually uh, have these villages uh, allocated other places um, where they can actually continue their activities. Okay. Now, I also heard an audio clip. Uh, a recording of one of the villagers actually speaking and he was saying that he was he was actually very very distraught saying that he had voted for zanu pf and during the campaign zanu pf had promised them a whole lot of stuff and he didn't understand why you know the same government was now treating them in this way did you manage to speak to any of them and find out exactly how they felt yeah, we, we did, um, and um, the, the general feeling uh, was that um, a number of these people had been uh, allocated land mm -hmm. um, in the Zantian uh, 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 driven program, right. and they were loyal to Zantian supporters, mm -hmm. and they never expected that they would just be moved away so suddenly. So for them, it's like they feel like they've been used, and right. now they are just being dumped. Okay. Now, I have some statements that I picked up from the way, I mean, people's reactions towards this eviction. Some are saying, Tendai Chaminuka says, the settler regime did likewise, and now this Uhuru meant, which is a funny way of saying government, of black niggers, as he calls it, is doing the same. Surely people were not fighting against minority rule, but they wanted to replace a skin color, but made sure that the same conditions remained. Meaning we were freed and then, uh, uh, you know, captivated again. So these are just some of the sentiments that people are feeling. One called Joe says, Shua erimari, darwadziwa, aiwa ndokuti mchanga muke. Next elections, munotengwa futi, nekapie beans. And they basically say this is so that these villagers would wake up Next time, in the, during the next election, they shouldn't be bought by a cup of beans. Well, some strong sentiments here. Wasum Tema says, Newsday, you must be lying. Nothing like this is happening. This must be fictitious. Who on earth can do such a thing? Not my party. You are lying. If this is true, then hmm. So what is the general feeling amongst the people, you know, in the urban areas who have heard about this story? Um, we, we actually did um, um, a, a, a vox pop uh, oh. on the people uh, telling them about this. Mm -hmm. And some of them felt that uh, they foresaw this happening mm -hmm. uh, because they say they have known that uh, Zantio has got a tendency of making promises towards the elections. Right. And uh, when the election passes, they forget about the people. And then when the elections are coming, then they go back. And some of the some of the urban people are actually saying now, Zantiev thrives on the poverty of the people because they know that they can go and just give them a few things right. which can change their minds uh, towards elections. Um, and then they can then go back to their old ways of um, harassing and suppressing people's views. Okay, so do you think the government is in a position to at least assist these people? Has there been any assistance that they've received? Because it becomes a health hazard to, you know, just place people without not proper sanitary uh, facilities or access to clean water and stuff like that. What has been going on in that direction? Has the government offered any help? Um, at this point, I think uh, we, we don't uh, foresee any government intervention mm -hmm. because in the first place, they have not even acknowledged that this has happened. Right. Um, the, uh, there hasn't been any official statement from government uh, as to the effect of... Did you, did you and, try uh, to reach out to them? Uh, we did not. The only um, uh, reach out that we made was to the police. Right. Um, yes. 
uh, who also did not manage to confirm uh, whether it happened or so, not. So it's kind of like obvious that there's obviously some directions coming from the top and people are afraid to speak. Is that what it seemed? Yeah, that's what it seems because another important factor to this is that one of the uh, people who were evicted is mm -hmm. um, what you call in Shona a superhero or a spirit medium right. who is said to be uh, possessed with uh, the spirit of Mbiani and uh, oh. the spirit medium that drove the, the liberation the, struggle. Right, the first children. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, this uh, uh, Shikiro has been, uh, according to the villagers, mm -hmm. has been instrumental in um, in uh, advising government officials on certain matters. Right. And we are told that, yes, this is actually a high-profile matter as some ministers are also arguing against this uh, on the, on this so this is not being publicized. This is something that's happening behind closed doors because I don't seem to have found any information on what the government has responded towards this, uh, these evictions. Yeah, this is just something that's within the public sphere but it has not been in the official uh, media or of in the official government communication. Okay. Now, this is just one of those heartbreaking stories. We know that there are other thousands, others like 60,000 families also. This is in now in the Tokwe Mukosi Dam area in, uh, in Mashingo that were also, you know, displaced because of flooding by the creation of this uh, Tokwe Mukosi Dam, which uh, is supposed to be holding, supposed after construction is finished, to hold 1.8 billion cubic liters of water. Now, what has been happening to these families? Did you visit that area as well? Yes, uh, we did visit the area, and we managed to see the, the victims of this flood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can confirm that uh, there has been a lot of uh, problems that these people have gone through. Mm -hmm. Firstly, um, some of these people were moved, and they say that they were not directly affected by the floods, mm -hmm. uh, but they were within the banks of the uh, of the of the uh, dam. Right. And they felt that government just moved them too quickly. Uh, they should have let them stay on and uh, harvest their crops since it was right. towards the end of the season. Right. And they are now complaining that they been left destitute and they are not getting enough assistance. Right. Uh, this is even after the president declared this a disaster, a state of disaster. Yes, that is that is after uh, it, it, it has been declared a disaster. Do you think Zimbabwe is bankrupt in the, in, in the sense that it cannot even assist sensible relocations for its own citizens? I don't think so because um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a case of priorities because right now we have uh, reports that uh, uh, Parliament is going to spend about 15 million on MPs' vehicles. Oh, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yes. And whilst people are struggling so, and people are going out uh, without any means, you know, like like some are, are not paid. The civil servants are here. Yes, yes, and and to also consider that. Uh, Especially the people at Tokem Kosi, mm -hmm. uh, government has been um, calling for non-governmental organizations in the corporate sector to assist, and yet they themselves have not even doled out a cent towards those people. So it's kind of uh, a, a, a case of uh, the priorities of government are not towards those people. Okay, but were there any was there any aid provided bes uh, at these people with these, for these people in the Tokyo area? Sorry, can you come again? Yeah, I'm saying because since the president declared this a state of disaster, was there any aid of some sort provided for these people? Because these are different from those that were evicted because, to you know, they need to 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 build a game park, but these people have been move because of a flooding so was there any kind of assistance provided to them 
Yes, there was a considerable amount of aid from um, some corporate sectors mm -hmm. and some NGOs, and the government itself came in with uh, mostly human resources and um, choppers, uh, helicopters, mm -hmm. and uh, trucks to, to ferry the people from their places to the transit camp. Okay. But, yes, yes. But on a large scale, the, the number of people is slightly too large for the uh, few uh, contributors, which has left some of the people having to build their own temporary shelters and also the food. Uh, they have been saying that it's not enough for them to do uh, the directions that they are getting. Okay. Anyway, Tapiwa, thank you very much for joining us. We have more, lots more to talk about, like uh, the Kariba Dam that's actually being uh, on the verge of collapse. We're going to make that a different segment when we speak to you, and hopefully you're going to keep us informed. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope we'll uh, uh, keep you informed. Thank you. So this was Tapiwa Ziriva. He's a Zimbabwe journalist based in Harare. He actually writes for four websites and, uh, and news websites. That's Newsday, Southern Eye, The Independent, and The Standard. So he was joining us via phone from Harare just to explain to us what is the plight facing these families that have been displaced. Stay tuned. I'm Fungai Maburaki.